Okay, now the next question says, how much cash do you need to have today in order to retire in the 35 years with $1 million, assuming you can earn 5% on average? Okay. So again, first thing we wanna do, try to figure out what this problem is asking for. And here we have one of our giveaways. How much cash do you need to have today, right? In order to retire at some point in the future, 35 years in the future, with a million dollars. So we want to know how much do I need to invest now, presently, in order to have a million dollars 35 years in the future. So we have a present value problem. Now we can identify the missing pieces in the formula. We need to know the rate that we're going to earn. We need to know the number of periods over which we're going to earn that rate. And we need to know the future value. Where are we trying to get to? Right. Now, the rate that we're going to earn, 5%, again, in a homework or exam, you, this would be specifically laid out. But here, we're going to have a 5% annual rate, so 5% per year. And because year is our compounding period, we do not need to do any further conversion on either the rate or the n. We just can uh, set our number of periods to be 35 years. And again, we, we want to be sure that the periods that we write down here are both in agreement. The future value is what we want to end up with in 35 years, and that's $1 million. Now, we uh, compute our present value. And we get, well, let's see. First thing we always do, second, future value to clear the time value of money function. Now we've got zeroed out buttons in here and we can start wherever we want. We'll start with the IOI and remember, we're gonna press the button first, press the value first, then press the IOI button to set our value. And remember that with IOI, with the rate, we are always entering in the calculator or Excel as a whole number. So we are entering as a percentage instead of a decimal. Then 35 years, so 35 and in. The number, the amount that we want to get to in our account is $1 million. So that is our future value, 1 million. Then what we're gonna to do to solve for present value, we simply press compute PV and we get $181,290. Twenty-eight point fifty-four cents. So, if I want to in retire in thirty-five years with a million dollars, and I'm only going to make one single payment into an investment account, that payment needs to be worth one hundred eighty-one thousand dollars. Now, of course, this is a pretty unrealistic example for most people's retirement, because most of us are going to put or try to put save for our retirement a small amount every. Uh, every month uh, or every year, but hopefully every month, every paycheck, we're putting away a small amount for retirement, starting as soon as we possibly can. We're not going to save up somehow $180,000 and then invest it all at once and wait 35 years without doing anything else to save for retirement. That's just not a feasible option. And so you'll see that we can make this problem more realistic in the next chapter when we start to look at the idea of payments. Okay, and, and the final problem here will, will uh, the final problem here says, how much will your house be worth if it appreciates at 7% per year? You bought it for 200,000 and you hope or expect to sell it in five years from today. Right? So we want to know what kind of problem is this? And the question here is asking, what our house, what something that we own is going to be worth in five years? We know what it's worth now because we just bought it for 200,000. We know that the price is going to increase for, or the value is going to increase 7% per year. And the question is, what is it going to be worth five years from now, given those inf given that information? And what that means is that we have a future value problem. What is the value of something in the future? Now, the information that we need uh, in order to solve the problem is pretty similar. We still need the rate, we need the number of periods, 
and we need what it is worth today, the present value. And then we can solve for the future value. Okay. So the rate here is 7% per year. Again, the rate is usually what we're looking for uh, in order to guide our uh, understanding of what the compounding period is, because that's usually where we're going to find out that the compounding period is different than, uh, than what we expect. Uh, so the rate is 7% per year. Because we're using an annual period, then we don't have to do any additional conversion. Our number of periods is five years. Our present value is what we paid for today, what the house is worth today. So we just bought it for 200000 And because we bought it, it is a cash outflow. This is money leaving our, our person, our account. So it is a negative 200000 present value. Right? We are spending 200000 on the house. When we sell it in five years, we will be receiving that money. And that is the cash inflow, which is our future value. So we compute future value here, and again, let's just do it on the calculator. Uh, by the way, also uh, clearing, uh, turning your calculator on and off does not clear these values either. Okay? The only way to do it is to suppress clear time value of money. So we'll do that to start every problem. Second, future value to clear the time value of money. We start with 7 and IY. We have a five years that we're going to hold this house, so five and then in. And then to enter a negative value in this calculator, you enter the positive amount and then you press the plus minus button down here. That gives you your negative. And then we set it as our present value by pressing PV. Now to solve for future value, instead of present value, we just press compute future value and we get our answer. 280,000, $510.34.61. Okay. So if we buy our house for 200,000 and we hold it for five years and prices on houses go up 7% a year, which is pretty, pretty high, that's pretty ridiculous. In five years from now, our house will be worth $80,000 more.